Hello all my truth seekers, welcome to the truth show. In this video, I will discuss the latest news about the Royals. I must admit, I stopped talking about the Royals because the hate against Megan is too much. It's too much for me. But it's time to update all of you on what's going on. So let's talk. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. Here we go again. I mean, this is a true show, and there's more. Oh, I'm not, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. I mean, this is a true show. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. Okay, the infamous William and Kate. What are these two up to? The perfect couple they portray. Despite the rumor of William being a serial cheater, Kate turns a blind eye until the news of his infidelities gets out. Then she's all upset and the whole shtick. But we can all agree that Kate knew what she was getting into before marriage. Trust me, she wasn't marrying William because she was deeply in love. Her family business wasn't doing so well. You don't believe me? Fact check me. And they needed Kate to save them. And that's precisely what she did and then some. Kate studied the family. She dressed and does everything she's told like the perfect submissive rich housewife and clone between the late princess diana queen elizabeth and Meghan markle i mean does she have her own style i'm just saying now that we get that out of the way now let's talk about what they're up to now well it seems that prince william and kate middleton are officially back in business and made their first joint appearance in weeks well last week thursday the Prince and Princess of Wales traveled to Scarborough to meet with various charitable organizations dedicated to improving teenagers' mental health. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sounds familiar? Yeah, the copycats never stop. I mean, I'm just saying. Oh, and I did check. The charity was recently initiated conveniently around when Prince Harry started his, you know, to overshadow the whole thing. Oh, yes. The organization they met with received a combined three hundred and forty five thousand dollars from the royal foundation of the prince and princess of wales and the two writing committee foundation william and kate first visited the street and community center that provided local organizations a place to learn how to expand to serve their communities better while at the street they met some of the leaders of the organization who talked about how they would use the funding to expand their services i hope so and get this once they concluded their engagement, they greeted the crowd who gathered outside and took selfies. I mean, they took selfies with them and everything. Very new. And Kate also kneeled down and talked to the crowds more. You know how Megan did it despite the Queen's orders for them not to do that? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. She's a new woman. Kate is a new woman. Or should I say a clone woman? Or who cares? I guess in time we will see. Moving right along here. You know, I may have my regards about Prince Charles and his past mistakes, but I am fair and I do acknowledge who participated in the forced marriage with now King Charles and the late Princess Diana. King Charles made it known that he wasn't in love with Diana. He was forced to marry her, which was unfair because Diana could have chosen and lived a different life and may be still alive today. This resulted from greedy, controlling people in Diana's and Charles' lives. Thankfully, miracles were produced by this selfish arrangement, William and Harry. We also know that Prince Charles was neglected by his parents and was sent off to boarding school or anything to keep him busy and out of their way. So when the genetic experience gold digging queen of consort Camilla, who come from a long line of gold diggers, came along, and offered the comfort and so a motherly companion that his parents didn't provide, he felt deep, deeply in love. And the only woman he wanted aside for affairs in between was Camilla. Putting myself in Charles' shoes, 
I would have been so miserable being forced with a child practically on top of everything else that was going on. I would have pulled a Prince Harry, just saying, but he probably couldn't. However, this would explain his attitude toward his privilege always getting what he wanted and always being protected by Mommy Deer's brother, Prince Andrew. He would give no mercy because they were raised differently. Prince Andrew was the makeup slash do-over baby because when Charles was growing up, Elizabeth was being trained to become queen. And Philip was at the sea without telling Br'er else and what else he was doing and was involved in. In contrast, Charles and Anne were constantly sent away. So trust me, Andrew would not be getting any passes and protection like the late queen gave him. Did you know she was paying for his legal fees and redirecting the press away from his sick crimes with Epstein onto degrading lynching of Meghan and Harry's marriage and characters? Well, mainly Meghan. Yes, yeah, she did that. Meaning she had the power to protect Harry and Meghan, but she didn't. She chose to protect her favorite child, Prince Andrew, instead, despite his sick crimes. The Queen of England, Elizabeth II, passed away this afternoon, and I offer my sincere condolences to her family and to those who feel really close to her family. It is never easy to lose somebody that you love. As the longest reigning British monarch, 70 years, the world has come to know and love Queen Elizabeth. But with that being said, there are still many mixed emotions. In fact, a lot of people of color around the globe are calling to end the British monarchy. And I want to show you why. For many, the monarchy represents colonialism and British imperialism. Only 22 countries have never been invaded by Britain. 22. To be honest, people around the world, especially black and brown people whose ancestors experienced unspeakable cruelty because of British imperialism, they have every right to feel whatever they may feel. The reality is many people of color still live with the consequences of the economic exploitation due to the British monarchy. Haiti was invaded by Britain in 1793. During the Haitian Revolution, the leader of the monarchy was King George III, who was Queen Elizabeth's third great-grandfather. King George III saw an opportunity to seize the richest colony in the world, Saint-Domingue, and so he took it. For five years, Britain was fighting to take this colony and add it to their empire. This means that our Haitian ancestors had to fight against not only the French and the Spanish, but also the British in order for us to gain independence, for us to gain our humanity back. Even though Haitians won the battle and gained their independence in 1804, the British monarchy refused to recognize Haiti and ostracized Haiti like the other world powers until 1833. If you want to understand more, research British imperialism and you'll start to see why there are still so many strong emotions. Now what's more tragic, the queen dying or her loyalists thinking the world should be mourning with them too? And with all the people celebrating, thinking Diana will get you justice when the queen makes it to heaven. A bit of an insult thinking she's going to make it to heaven after this list. <laughs> On a serious note. <laughs> On a serious note, do you know how many brave souls fought to gain independence from the monarch all over Asia and Africa? If it wasn't for the queen, we wouldn't have people like Nelson Mandela and Mahatma Gandhi. I guess we have something to thank her for. But if you didn't know, these countries are still under the subjugation of the monarch. And I live in Canada. I can't speak for the majority of these countries, but as a settler in Canada, I was quite surprised when I found out majority of Canadians support and believe we should become an independent republic from the monarch. As much as I would like to become an independent republic, as for now, Charles is the king of the countries that I listed. Let me leave you with some good news. The funeral day and the coronation day will be considered a national holiday. The Queen... Her gold carriage alone is made of four tons of solid gold, worth over $370 billion at today's gold prices. The Bank of England Nominees Limited was established to hide the Queen's investments. Secrecy about her wealth protects her. Government and banking officials inform the Queen about where to invest her wealth. That's called insider trading, and it's illegal. But the Queen gets away with it scot-free. Why? because she's the queen and she's immune to prosecution.
The Queen owns more than 300 residences, including castles and palaces, crown jewels, over 27,000 masterpieces, prize racehorses, and a fleet of Bentleys and Rolls Royces. Her colossal wealth also includes crown land and investments that she inherited from her black nobility ancestors. The Queen's Crown Estate includes over 50% of the UK's coastline, as well as Regent Street and Windsor Great Park. Her trillions in wealth are passed down to her descendants, untaxed. Would British tourism collapse if the monarchy was abolished? No, statistically, Buckingham Palace doesn't even make the top 20 list of tourist attractions. Do you know how much the Queen is worth? 17 trillion pounds. That's 30 trillion dollars. She could end world hunger and poverty tomorrow. Besides insider trading and tax-free income, the slave trade and drug trade. Queen Elizabeth I started the British slave trade in 1564. As head of the Church of England, her slave trading of African blacks upset the moral foundations of the church. Queen Elizabeth II is now head of the Church of England. 200 years after the slave trade was abolished, the church was pressured into confessing its horrific crimes and apologizing for profiting from the African slave trade. At first, the Queen and the Church only admitted to owning slaves and plantations, but the public soon discovered that the Church had given their blessing to something far worse. The Church had approved the beating, mutilation, rape, kidnapping and murder of tens of millions of Africans by declaring that Africans had no soul. This gave the church a divine license to profit from their diabolical crimes. Even more lucrative than Queen Elizabeth's slave trade was Queen Victoria's drug trade. Opium was grown and manufactured in the British-owned opium factories of British India. China banned the importation of opium, but once the British monarch secured a drug trade monopoly, over 17,000 illegal chests of opium worth millions were forced onto the Chinese population. The British waged three drug wars on China to force them to pay for the illegally imported opium. China's emperor didn't stand a chance against the British East India Company gunboats and Royal Navy. The British destroyed, plundered, looted and raped their way along the coast of China until there was nothing left to loot or plunder. On August 29, 1842, the Treaty of Nanking forced the Chinese government to pay 15 million pounds to the British merchants to open up its ports to opium trade and to cede Hong Kong to the British. This was the ugly origin of Hong Kong's 155 years as a stolen British crown colony. There are people who believe that they have a God-given right to rule over others. They believe that their outward appearance is superior to all others. They harbor selfish ambitions to be rich and to have power over what they describe as common people. They lie, cheat, steal, strangle, stab and slash their way to power. They believe that their actual willpower, what the British occultist Alistair Crowley described as the will of Thelema, the royal will, must be obeyed. Literally millions of people have been slaughtered at the behest of the royal lust for war. And thousands of people have been assassinated so that demonic dukes and killer queens can reign supreme. Prince Charles can give two cents on what they say about spoiled Prince Andrew in the press. Here's what was released by Daily Mail. Prince Andrew was left bereft and tearful when Charles told him he would never return to royal duties. The Duke of York's hopes of returning to public life were dashed at one-on-one -on -one meetings with his older brother that an insider has described as emotional and fraught. And the devastating decision has left those around the Duke concerned for his well-being, a source told this newspaper. 
Andrew is said to have been blindsided about by the outcome of the private meetings held at Charles's Burke Hall estate in Scotland just days before the Queen's death. Believe it or not, naive as it may sound, he always had hopes of regaining his position as a senior royal. Oh yes, the sorts leaked. At the meeting, Charles told him that he could go off and have a good and nice life, but that his public life as a royal is at an end. He was told, you have to accept this. So yes, this means no more handouts and a privileged life. He can live freely. But you all know what happens when a spoiled person must grow up finally? Disaster. Also note that the queen had no intentions of allowing Prince Andrew to return to his royal duties. She kept the press, of course, out of his business and continued lynching Meghan and Harry's characters as a distraction and continued supplementing his lifestyle, but kept him out of the limelight. She did the same thing to cover up her husband Prince Philip's dirty deeds as well. Oh yes. It has been released that King Charles is considered eliminating some of the royal members of the family, especially the ones who have no duties and would never become king or queen. They're just lazy freeloading members sitting back and collecting taxpayers' money. I know one thing he needs to do with freedom for racists in that country because it's ridiculous. Take a look at this. Late 50s, 60s, 70s England. I don't think people understand the level of racism that was present in this country. I just got goosebumps then because... Well, they don't understand yeah. it. And the idea of being othered, that you would leave your house and literally take your life into your hands. I mean, I remember randomly getting off a bus and instantly being chased by a group of skinheads. And you would just automatically find yourself running. To have come here from the Caribbean with ideas of streets are paved with gold, England being the mother country, to have come here with that idea and to be met with that amount of hostility, to be met with that amount of abuse, that amount of rejection, I think it seriously damaged not just my father, but many people who came here in that generation, that Windrush generation, because it's fascinating to me how many Caribbean parents do not want to talk about that period, just do not want to go there because I think it was horrific. Because of the hashtag that is now trending, listen to what Prince Harry said back in 2021 concerning his wife and their departure from the UK. There was no option to leave. Eventually when I made that decision for my family, I was still told you can't do this. I was like, well, how bad does it have to get until I am allowed to do this? Well, she was going to end her life. It shouldn't have to get to that. Do I have any regrets? Yeah, my biggest regret is not making more of a stance earlier on in my relationship with my wife and calling out the racism when I did. History was repeating itself. My mother was chased to her death while she was in a relationship with someone that wasn't white. And now look what's happened. You want to talk about history repeating itself? They're not going to stop until she dies. It's incredibly triggering to potentially lose another woman in my life. Like, the, the, the list is growing. And it all comes back to the same people, the same business model, the same industry. My father used to say to me when I was younger, he used to say to both William and I, well, it was like that for me, so it's going to be like that for you. That doesn't make sense. Just because you suffered, that doesn't mean that your kids have to suffer. In fact, quite the opposite. If you suffered, do everything you can to make sure that whatever experiences you, negative experiences that you had, you can make it right for your kids. We chose to put our mental health First. That's what we're doing. That's what we will continue to do. In other news, it seems that boozing queen consort Camilla was secretly forced into a posh rehab facility 5,000 miles away from London in hopes King Charles' wife can dry out before his May coronation 
and avoid further humiliation to the monarchy. Palace sources tell the National Enquirer in a world exclusive after Camilla fell off the wag and launched a gin-fueled reign of terror following Queen Elizabeth's September 8th death at the age of 96 years old. She was quickly packed off to the exclusive 4,000 a day Salkai Center near Bangalore, India. A high level courtier says, and these are facts, she gets let out for very much needed appearance and so on. It seems that the monarch's 75 year old wife, Camilla, yeah, that Prince Charles' wife, Camilla, yeah, Prince Charles is 75, will be expected to sober up for the eighth time, yes, eighth time from the moment she became queen consort and learned she was to be crowned alongside Charles next May. She became a monster, says this courtier. No one was safe from her tirades. She was acting like a ratchet diva. Her true colors came out. Oh, yes. After a few gin and tonics or glasses of wine, there was no reasoning with her. As far as she was concerned, Camilla Rude. Furious William understood the late Queen Elizabeth's death was intense, and he understood why she turned to alcohol for comfort, says the source. But she was out of control and needed to sober up. Of course, Camilla was outraged, but Charles sided with his son and told her that if she didn't get help, he would refuse to allow her to be crowned alongside him. Uh huh. Camilla is the love of Charles' life, but he won't stand for anything or anyone jeopardizing his role as king. He's waited decades for this, as we all know. I don't blame him. No one would care if he refused to crown her. Heck, everyone would be happy, to be honest. In an instant, he packed Camilla off to Sakai for 10 days, warning her to banish the booze before she came back. She arrived October 21st under a strict veil of secrecy before being shipped off unrepentant Camilla launched a revenge spree against Prince William's wife, Kate. Oh, yes. Whom she feels is her rival since Charles' oldest son and daughter-in-law are next in line for the throne. She focused her bitter rants on William's wife, says the source. I'm told conniving Camilla reduced Kate to tears on at least three occasions. She not only demanded Kate curtsy to her any time they met, but she also revealed the budget for the Princess of Wales royal wardrobe to be slashed. Okay, I can understand that. Kate has been known to spend way too much money on her clothes for her and her family. I'm talking about her, mo her mother and dad and sisters and whatever. Yeah, uh-huh. She's taking care of them too. Camilla's reported to be so jealous of much younger and beautiful Kate that she persuaded Charles to cut Kate's wardrobe allowance for outfits she wears through official war engagement, telling him, well, I can agree. Kate does seem to get any and everything she wants. Camilla's reported to have said this, though. She can wear her hand-me-downs. <laughs> okay, that's wrong. That's drastic. Come on, Camilla. Drastic. <laughs> But sources claim that Kate is known for rebranding outfits to cut costs. Uh, okay. I think the Inquirer just siding with Kate on this, but they always do that. Anyways, but the targets of her most bitter attacks were William and Kate's children. Camilla slammed George, who's nine years old. That's the um, young boy who's next in line to be the king. Charlotte, who's six years old, believe it or not. And Louis or Louis however they pronounce his name, is four years old. A spoiled brat who antics humiliated the royal family during the Queen's Jubilee celebrations and her funeral, says the courtier. Okay, I agree with this. They were embarrassing and it was leaked that Kate's nannies are the prominent caregivers for the children. Kate is always busy doing other things or chasing after serial cheater William. And at the same time, sending Prince George to be taught to be the future king. Also sending Princess Charlotte to a charm school. Yes. Prince Louis, or Louis, however they pronounce his name, was often spared and ignored. Hence his resentment and his resentments toward his mother and father. He barely knows them. And from staff, he doesn't even like his parents. Meanwhile, the accusation devastated Kate because why would Camilla resent Kate? I mean... Two birds flock me quit. See, this is the reason why. Because the late queen almost skipped over Charles and gave the crown to William and Kate. Now Camilla's hell-bent on making sure Kate gets no ideas about replacing her as a queen. No, see, insider. But like many drunks, Camilla is her own worst enemy. 
Charles and William are hoping Camilla's latest trip to rehab will stick, you know, so she can sober up and hopefully stay dry for extended periods of times. Hopefully after, you know, this visit to this holistic health center. Now, officially her eighth trip, this is her eighth trip, remember I said that, since 2010, including one with Charles. Yeah, uh-huh. Was for rejuvenation therapies. But sources say alcohol detox is the real reason Camille and her handlers even tried to visit the clinic last month, unannounced, keeping her trip off the royal calendar. Headed by Camilla's friend, Dr. Isaac Mathai, the Residential Institute bills itself as the world's first health destination, focusing on healing and prevention and rejuvenation. So the press won't get leaked that she's in rehab. Oh yeah. And offers individualized treatments to address issues like addiction. Now, notes another Palace Insider, the treatment have worked in the past, you know, for a moment, and Charles is desperately hoping it'll work again. Well, eight, eight times? I mean, that's ridiculous. I don't, I don't know about all this. It's ridiculous. He's already walking on eggshells and waiting his son, Prince Harry, expose about the royal family, allegedly. The last thing he needs is humiliating scenes with a boozed up wife at his coronation on May 6th. Now, remember, this is all alleged. All alleged. In more news, Meghan and Harry, well, sources say Harry has never been happier despite the UK's false press leaks to various news sources. Meghan's podcast is doing excellent, aside for the UK alienate many from being a guest on the podcast, but Cara is a bitch. Harry's book is heavily anticipated and the world's thinking will be about them. I doubt that. Sources say it's about him and, and the history of his headlines and how he dealt with the death of his mother, you know, his marriage to Megan, you know, things of that nature. Nothing personal about Charles, his brother, and his mistress turned wife, now Queen Camilla. I mean, so I don't know what they're worrying about. He's not stupid. Well, that's it. King Charles and Queen Camilla were out and about in York today, where they visited York Minster. This is a cathedral where they unveiled the first statue commemorating Elizabeth II since her passing. Now, I was all excited, all prepared to talk about this sculpture and the choices that are being made here. Um, but then somebody threw eggs at the king, so we gotta talk about that instead. I will show you the video. There was a protester in the crowd in New York who threw four eggs at Charles and Camilla. They all missed. And he yelled, this country is built on the blood of slaves before being detained. <laughs> Now, I believe that the boos you can hear in the crowd are directed at the person who threw the eggs. Can you imagine? This story would be so much bigger if one of them had actually hit Charles. As it is, he kind of looked bemusedly down at the egg <laughs> that was at his feet and kind of just was shuffled along down the line. It seems pretty evident now that people who may not have been so willing to launch these protests when it was Queen Elizabeth going around are taking advantage of this situation of Charles' unpopularity to make these demonstrations. I can only imagine he had a lot to say about this once they were behind closed doors. Well, that's it. Let me know what you all think below on that note. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and hit that bell so you get notifications when I do post more videos. See y'all later. Love you all. Bye.